Well, hey there, how are you doing? I'm Jeff, welcome back to the channel, unless this is your first time here, in which case, it's great to have you. Today, I wanna to tell you about something that I just found out happened yesterday, and it kind of perturbed me off a little bit. I wish it hadn't happened. Earlier this year, back in May, I bought some shares of Transmedics Group, and the ticker symbol for that is TMDX. I really love the company. I actually did a video about them. They make medical equipment that make it really easy for healthcare providers to transport organs like hearts or lungs or livers from a donor if they're involved, for example, in an accident. And they need to get these organs to a person who needs these organs in order to survive. They make equipment. It's, it used to be that they'd put organs into a cooler and just ship it, you know, put it in a helicopter or a plane. But now these machines actually keep the organs going while they're in transport. Anyway, I bought seven shares of this company. It was selling at about $138 a share. So I think I split... So I think I spent about, so back in May, I bought about seven shares of this company at $138 a share. I think I spent about $1,000 building this position and I've just held it since then. But the experiment that I did in this Ando ETF account, which is a fictional ETF, you can't buy it, so don't try it. So what I did was I set a trailing stop loss. And this is something I've learned about through my reading from some really successful, some of the greatest traders ever use these trailing stop losses. And the idea is that it protects you on the downside. So it tracks your stock price as the stock price goes up. And if it ever falls down 20%, that's how I set mine from the high, then I've just set my stock to sell. You can set it however you want. You can set it at a certain dollar amount if the stock falls. You could set it for 5% or 7% or 10. I chose 20. So what happened was I, I bought these shares at 138, about seven of them back in May. And then about three or four days ago, I bought some more. It was at $140 a share. And I bought another, I think 15 shares. What I found out about just this morning that kind of surprised me is I had more cash in my brokerage account than I expected. And what had happened was yesterday, and I believe this was right at the start of trading, Transmedics Group stock dove sharply, something like maybe eight or 10%. And this added on to 10% it had fallen in the past several days or maybe the past week. And so cumulatively, Transmedic Group stock had fallen 20% from the high of when I had purchased it. So it basically went up from May until the present, and then it's come down 20 and it sold at 140 a share. And you know, I had just bought some a few days ago at about 140 a share. And so to me, this is frustrating because I want to own this stock and I think 140 is a good price. Well, what happened was I got stopped out of it on these seven shares, so I no longer own them. And the stock has just gone back up. The last I checked today, it was over 160. So fortunately, the 15 shares I bought the other day, I still own them. What I like about being a buy and hold investor is all the shares that you buy you own and if there are market fluctuations as long as you don't do anything you're still an owner of your stock and what i'm not really used to now is that when you set these trailing stop losses you don't even have to be aware of it but if the stock dives quickly unexpectedly due to this kind of market volatility we've had lately you can get stopped out of your position. It sells, you have cash. So anyway, you know, in this particular case, I'm not thrilled with the results. If this stock had lost 50% of its stock price in a day and stayed down, I'm sure I would be singing a different song right now. And I'd be grateful that I got out without a bigger loss. And my guess is that that's where the true value of these 
trailing stop losses um, lay is lie lay <laughs> where they rest that's why they're useful because they can prevent you from having a really steep and great loss that does not come with a rebound right after it but what i think um hurts as a trader and I, this is not a painful horrible situation it's just kind of a lesson that i've learned is when you get stopped out momentarily and i believe that this drop in stock price was just over the course of maybe a half hour or 15 minutes at the start of trading on Monday, August 5th, is that now I don't own those shares. So my gratitude here is that I'm learning this on a small scale. I mean, this was $1,000 that I invested into seven shares of Transmedics. So I should be grateful that I learned this lesson on a relatively small trade. And I do own some shares, the ones that I just bought recently. And maybe as I progress in my trading, I'm going to be making larger trades where there could be several thousand dollars at stake or many thousand. And I'll have a better idea of when I want to use these trailing stop losses and maybe when I don't. Because it's kind of like a good tool. Here is a pickaxe. Now I got this to dig some roots out of the ground out in my front yard. I have a tree that I removed and I need to get the roots out. And you need something that with a sharp tip that you can kind of bang away at. And then this has a also like a really sharp edge here, you can see. So these would be good at like fine picking and this would be good at maybe chopping some larger roots. But this here would be great for that kind of work. But if you needed to do some pounding of stakes into the ground or if you needed to break some stuff up or you were um, breaking say a brick in half because you were doing some masonry work and you needed to uh, hammer a chisel cut a brick then this would be great but these here are really different tools and they're useful for different stuff and so what i'm learning about is new tools uh, these are traders tools and from what i've learned for anybody who wants to be involved with trading and trading can really cover the gamut. There are people who buy and hold positions for long periods of time who are traders. And so they may also consider themselves investors or value investors. They can use some of the techniques of trading to their advantage. So I need to find out how these tools work best for what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, when I think back to one of the trades I made about four or five years ago before I even understood what trailing stop losses were, I bought Nvidia stock. I think it might have been around like $13 a share. And if I had got a trailing, if I'd set a trailing stop loss when I bought that, that caused it to sell if it went down 20% or so, I would not own those Nvidia shares because they've come down back in 2022, I believe, they came down like 50%. So they would have sold those have been some of my best performing shares ever and so i think that maybe what i'm going to do is choose certain stocks that i do think have the chance to 5x or 10x and make sure i don't have trailing stop losses set up for those because transmedics is in my opinion one of those companies that i think could really explode in growth over the next several years and i want to own it for several years and i'm willing to hold it even if it comes down in price 10 percent or 20 percent or 40 or even 50 percent and again i just want to reiterate this is not investment advice i do not know what's going to happen with transmetic stock and anything can happen in market. So I just want to underline that. These are just my opinions. So if I want to hold a stock for a long time and I'm not afraid of the volatility that will come along with that, I think that not using a trailing stop loss might be a better solution for me. I might reserve the trailing stop losses for stocks that are either highly volatile or where I'm not sure about this particular stock and whether it's gonna be a long-term holder, I don't know whether my prediction or probability for the stock to work out is intact. Like sometimes you don't know 100% about the stock. Maybe you only have a slight 
inkling that this is a good trade. And in that situation, it might make sense to use a trailing stop loss so that if your ideas about the stock, if you're wrong on the direction of the stock, instead of it going up, it goes down. You go, okay, I was wrong and now I don't have to worry about it because the stock is automatically sold at whatever that trailing stop loss amount is. So just thought this would be useful to share with you guys, mostly because I've been thinking about this today and thinking, what should I have done? Should I have done something differently? And I suppose if I had really stayed on top of the markets and looked at this closely, I might have seen that I was about to get stopped out of Transmedics Group. But again, the whole idea of these trailing stop losses is you don't have to be watching and waiting with your finger on the sell button looking at the stock price going down five, six, eight, 10%. It's just done for you. So uh, in any case, uh, I suppose the regret is just missing out on Transmedics Group's run from 140 to 160. But in reality, you can't win them all. And this is just one of those learning experiences where I now know something about using trailing stop losses that I didn't know before. And uh, I do think the value, like I said earlier, is in protecting you from the steep loss where the stock price doesn't rebound after. And, you know, you don't have to sit around being emotional and feeling like, oh, I really should have sold this earlier. I shouldn't have waited so long. And I wonder if this thing will ever come back again. So I think that's why these trailing stop losses can be useful. So those are my thoughts on this. Um, it has been a really volatile week in the stock markets. I haven't been making too many videos about this because I'm really not a market predictor. And I just feel like I get oversaturated if I watch too much uh, material or content about what's happening in markets. Nobody really knows what's happening. There are all these guesses about why things are going on the way they are, but I don't have anything to add to that discussion. And uh, I just want to make stuff for you guys that I think, you know, I'd find useful if I were watching them. And uh, I think this idea about learning about trailing stop losses is useful, especially if you want to invest and kind of protect on the downside. So let me know what you think about this in the comments section. Always love hearing from you guys. If you like this, please tap the like button. And uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, I talk about stocks talk about ETFs. Oh, and by the way, uh, I've made many videos on this channel about my semiconductor portfolio, and I've been checking it over the last week or two, and what I've noticed is all of those gains that this portfolio made from January when I began it until now, we're right in the beginning of August, they have pretty much vanished. I think the portfolio was negative 1% when I last checked, and I don't have my phone with me right now, but it's essentially down 1% this year. All of that uh, stock price appreciation, you know, some of those stocks have still done, still done really well, but they've been balanced by some that have done poorly. And so the net is negative one. And the S&P 500 is up probably, you know, nine or 10%. So, um, and also, I guess the best benchmark for my semiconductor portfolio would be SOXX or SMH. And those are do both doing much, much better than negative 1% so far this year. So I think it's a little bit early to make any final decisions. These are mostly small cap semi stocks and I'm not selling any of them and I didn't set trailing stop losses. So I will continue holding them throughout the rest of the year before I make any decisions. But I just wanted to be transparent with you guys, which is, uh, this portfolio has not generated a positive return yet. As of August 6, 2024, it is technically negative 1.0%. So, hey, learning from this experiment as well. Um, my lesson so far is that if I were to, just knowing what I know now, January 1st, I probably would have invested in a uh, semiconductor ETF like SOXX and received a better return without all the work. But let's let's wait. I'm gonna I'm I'm willing to wait until the end of December and then look back and then decide was I better off picking semiconductor stocks on my own 
or should I have just gone with a semiconductor ETF? So thanks so much for spending some time today. It's always great to see you guys, even though I'm not really seeing you, but the best part is hearing from you in the comments. So just leave a few words, a little note, anything that you're thinking about, and uh, maybe any experience that you have had in the last few days, either with trading stocks, if you have bought and sold, or maybe you've just bought a few stocks to hold long term because you know, you're taking advantage of some of the dips in stock price. So really look forward to hearing from you guys and I will see you in the next video.